Have you ever had a situation where you were forced to walk a very long distance? Maybe you broke down, you got in an argument with a friend, whatever. But you had to walk one of the longest distances you've ever walked in your life. Well, I've had plenty of them over the years. And if I can pack this in the 10 minutes or so, I'll tell you about a few of them. Because most of them were when I was a teenager or in the military. And one that comes to mind, this is one of the first ones. When I went, went into the military, what they do is they send you to what's called the MEP station in the Army. Uh, military Entrance Processing Center. And I had to go to the Alfred P. Murrah building. I'm pretty sure that's where it was in Oklahoma City. Uh, and I, you're there all day. You know, you go there the night before, you spend the night. They get you up early, they take you there, they do your physical, all your medical tests, they get all your information. Back then there was no computers, so everything was done on typewriters. Uh, it took a while. Well, a friend of mine, he wasn't. A, he rode from me from uh, Tulsa, and he didn't have an ID or a, a license or whatever. And he 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 could get it. He had to get a duplicate or something. So for whatever reason, I don't remember. I didn't even know this guy before this. You know, for this situation. I decide, yeah, we're, they said, oh, you got to go over to the driver's license place. It's dead down the road. And so I said, because uh, it's boring sitting in there all day. I said, all right, I'll go with them. You know, the Army always has the buddy system. You always yeah, make sure somebody knows where you're going, go with somebody. So I went with them. Well, we didn't find the driver's license place. We got lost. We're walking. We must have walked for three hours. We are sweating bullets because we know we're in trouble. Uh, because we've been gone way, way, way too long. And man, I mean to tell you, we were walking and walking for hours. Finally, we seen a, uh, and it, we seen a National Guard building. So we said, hey, man, we're getting in the Army. We'll just go tell these guys. Maybe they'll give us a ride. So they did. Went in there, and they called the MEP station. Said, we got, got two, of your, two morons here that got lost. And they gave us a ride over to the... Back to the map stations, and yeah, we finished everything, and then off to basic training we go. But I'll, you will never forget the times where you're forced to walk a lot of miles, and uh, I will never forget that. What was bad was all the miles that I was walking, you know, we were sore as heck after that, and we have to go to basic training right then. So it wasn't a good start. Second time that comes to mind, it was me, my little brother, and my best friend and we were going to a place called Spavanaugh Creek in Oklahoma where we'd go fishing so my brother just got his driver's license he was he was he had to be yeah 16 so that made me probably 19 I don't know anyway we set off and he's got one of these uh 70s model Mustangs and we set off in this thing and it breaks down on the turnpike. And we're, we're probably 10 miles into the turnpike and it breaks down. So we're 10 miles from the gate. And we sit there for hours and finally these two guys pulled up. You know, we're kids, we're young kids. We're not mechanics at that point. We don't know anything. They said, oh yeah, it's your timing belt. We can fix it for you for 200 bucks so you know we pulled our money together we came up with the 200 bucks we rode with them to the parts store we got the timing belt all they did was they they didn't have a timing now we know but back then we didn't know they just slapped the belt on wherever it stopped and got in their vehicle and boogied so we took off we got about two miles down the road boom 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 yeah blew it all up because they didn't have it in the right spot to put the timing belt on. It has to be timed just right. So after that, we, oh man, we stayed on the road for, there. Was, and you got to remember, this is probably 1984. There's no cell phones. You're on a turnpike. The exits are limited. So we had no way to call nobody. So we started walking towards the, the turnpike gate, and it took us quite a while we're goofing off on the way you know 
Man, and then we call uh, my best friend's brother, and he comes, and, you know, that whole deal, just waiting at the gate took an hour, two hours before he could get out, you know, wasn't exactly close by where everybody lived. And so that was one situation, but the one I will never forget, well, there's actually two, uh, my best friend, I was over at his place in West Tulsa, it's a little town called Berry Hill, we got in an argument, and it was probably midnight, you know, I'm sure we were drinking some beers and there was alcohol and balls, that's what teenagers did back then, in fact, I know there was, but we got in an argument, and I did not have a vehicle, he had picked me up, and I did not have a vehicle, and I'm 25 miles away from where I live, and I might have even been home on leave from the, I don't know, I don't remember that, that was 40 something years ago, anyway, I take off walking. Well, it's 25 miles on the interstate to where, where I got to go. And I walked all night long, man, all night long. And there was one spot, and when you, when you cross from the west side of Tulsa to the other side, there's the Arkansas River Bridge. Well, back then, that bridge they had, which they have a new one now, you could not walk across. You, you could not walk across. And this was probably midnight, one in the morning. Traffic was light. But you did not want to... I mean, there was just two lanes and nothing. No shoulders, nothing. So some guy picks me up. And I'm kind of... i, I got to hitchhike across this thing. It's the only way to get across. Picks me up. Ah, I said, dude, I just need a ride to the other side of the bridge. Okay. And he puts his hand on my knee. You know, we're about halfway across this bridge. He puts his hand on my knee. Well, you know, I'm pretty buff at that age. Uh, so I took <laughs> his hand and I took it and I twisted him. And he's, oh, stop. He started crying and, you know, moaning. I, he says, let go. I said, you get across this bridge and you let me out. And I held on to that dude's hand till he stopped that vehicle. And I got out, and that dude took off. Man, uh, yeah, he, he tried it with the wrong guy, let me tell you. And I'll never forget that. And so I walked all night long, all night long, and I was a cigarette smoker. I didn't have any cigarettes. I ran out. I don't think I must not have had any money because I was picking up cigarette butts and smoking them. You know, smokers go through desperate times. Well, you know, I haven't smoked in 12 years. So I walked all through the night. Again, no cell phones, none of that business. All through the night, took the interstate the whole way. I think it was about 8 in the morning. I finally got to the exit where I lived. And I was so tired. Uh, I, the last thing I wanted to do was get my old man involved. But I, I couldn't go any further, so I called him. Uh, by then, you know, if I was drinking, I was sobered up and everything else. Of course, I, he knew, you know, as soon as I got in the car, I, he was drinking. Well, yeah. Now, that was one I will never forget. And let's see, what was another time? There, I know there was another time. I'm trying to think, man. And, but you don't never forget these times. Let's see, we covered that, that, and that. Yep. And I'm sure there were several more, but when you got to walk a long distance like that, man, and there was many occasions where I would have to walk, uh, break. That's why today I make sure whatever I'm driving, it has good tires, it is in good mechanical order, because I couldn't do that today. You know, of course, now we have cell phones, but I live in an area where if you break down, you may not have cell phone service. Uh, you may not get a signal out, and who are you going to call? And, you know, so you want to make sure you got good tires, good 10-ply tires for around here because we got gravel roads. There's one other time I had to walk. I'm trying to think of it. Oh, yeah, this is another one where alcohol was involved. I was, we were on, uh, <coughs> it was the weekend. I was at Fort Benjamin Harrison, Indiana. Uh, it's closed now. And we all decided to go downtown Indianapolis. And we went into a strip club, yeah, a bunch of young soldier guys. Now, I was not allowed to wear civilian clothes. I was on restrictions. When you first get to a base, you got to wear your, it used to be you'd have to wear a uniform if you went off base. Uh, not anymore. They don't do that. So 
we go in there and we're in there for several hours you know I'm not very old and we get to drinking and all that and one by one I noticed these guys are disappearing you know there was about 15 of us and then I'm starting to look around man there's only a few so you know the old trick well I'm gonna go look for him then they don't come back I'm gonna look for him then they don't come back well here I look up and there ain't nobody and the audience done turned a little more seedy than what it was we'll just say that I was one of a kind in there yeah <laughs> so I left out of there man and I'm walking and I'm walking now back then in downtown Indianapolis in the middle of the night man there was you didn't see nothing there was no crime there was no you know it was pretty safe but I had money that night, so I called the taxi, got back to base, and I got back in time, you know, the old the old club was still open, went in there, and there they, all them guys were laughing. It was something they, they planned to do. Not that I was a sucker, but I did done something to somebody a couple days before that, and they wanted revenge. They got it, but... That was another time, but I walked around and walked around, and then I finally called the taxi, because you had to find a payphone and i don't know there was a lot of situations where i was forced to walk a lot of miles uh you know a lot of them 40 years ago uh, i couldn't do that today so what is your crazy story uh, a lot of a lot of them involved breaking down i had to walk a few miles when i learned, uh, lived in vegas i broke down going to work ran out of gas uh, I, I was driving an s10 i ran out of gas and even then, man, that was probably 93, 94. The traffic was just crazy then. So my boss had to come get me. He brought a gas can from work. I worked at the Review Journal there. And we put the gas in, and I followed them to the newspaper. And then I, when I had lunch, I had to go get more gas. But that didn't necessarily, didn't, I didn't have to, I, I don't remember how I made the call. I think there was no cell phones. I'd probably walk to a gas station or something and call them. I don't remember, man. But them are situations you, that we all get in and that we don't want to. know. one that happened here, and that's my other truck, my red Silverado that's still in the shop. Going on two years now. Uh, going to Oklahoma, there's a little group of mountains you got to go through and go up and around for a little bit and then you're you're in the next town well I blew a spark plug and didn't know what happened I looked under the hood couldn't figure it out so I called my brother uh, this was probably in 2017 I think it was and it was 102 that day and I had to sit on the side of the road for like two hours before he could get out there and that was not fun that was the last time i broke down uh that's the only time that truck ever let me down but yeah it's not fun so you know always make sure your vehicles are up to par but you don't ever know you know you never can foresee when something's going to break down but make sure you have water in your vehicle emergency things in case it's too hot in case it's too cold always good to have and now luckily now we have cell phones but it didn't really pick up too good in there. Uh, I had to walk a little bit to get a signal. So, anyway, guys, thanks for watching. Happy trails.